Hello everyone. In the previous part of the video, we have discussed about the introduction to the climate of India and about two seasons or dry season which is from March to May and about rainy season that is of June to September. Now we will discuss about the season of retreating southwest monsoon winds that is from October to November. We know that southwest monsoon winds blows from southwest to northeast during the summer conditions. And these winds which blows from southwest to northeast direction should come back should come back that period only we will call it as season of retreating southwest monsoon winds that's from october to november why it will happen see this is tropic of cancer which passes through the india when sun will be direct on ocean bodies ocean bodies what happen the temperature of the ocean bodies will rise gradually the pressure will decrease the ocean body but when uh, the sun will be not there in the land, what will happen? Yeah, temperature will be low, pressure will be high. Obviously, if the wind blows from the land to the ocean, that only we will call it as season of retreating southwest monsoon winds. So, this uh, season of retreating southwest monsoon winds will not give many rainfall, much rainfall. It only give rainfall to the this coast, that is of Koramandal coast. Tamil Nadu, especially Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, that only the place we will get rainfall because there is the, there is no onshore winds. We have discussed what is uh, onshore and offshore winds, I suppose. Yes, right. So onshore wind, uh, onshore winds means which blow, which blows throughout the ocean bodies. Offshore means which will not blow on the ocean bodies. So this uh, southwest monsoon winds have no much water. Some southwest monsoon winds which will come here will give moisture, uh, will give rainfall to the Tamil Nadu. But if it is coming like this, there is no water bodies, right? So it will not give much rainfall. You should remember that it will only give rainfall to the Tamil Nadu by picking up the moisture from the Bay of Bengal. That is only the place and some part of Andhra Pradesh. That is only the place in which you will get rainfall during the month of October to November in the season of retreating southwest monsoon winds. Now coming to the cold season or the season of northeast monsoon winds. So the season of retreating southwest monsoon winds is also known as season uh, that is of northeast monsoon winds because it blows from northeast direction to the southwest direction. So I have explained why uh, it will happen. So that season uh, of uh, northeast monsoon winds from December to February it is known as cold season because it causes cold. So what are the characteristics of this cold season? Clear sky, pleasant weather, low temperature, low humidity and high range of temperature. You will learn what is range and uh, what is low temperature, right? High range of temperature and snow, northern winds are the chief characteristics of this season. So temperature condition, we know the low, low temperature and uh, temperature in the northern side will fall below 20. Temperature in the northern side fall below 20 degrees Celsius, especially Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir. Night will be like freezing, right, in the hilly areas. Now, uh, southern India, which is below the uh, which is below the Tropic of Cancer, so average temperature is 21 to 25 degrees Celsius. Actually, why uh, the temperature is not decreasing and it is not like snow falling? I have explained in the previous video because it is having oceans on its three sides, and that type of climate is known as the moderate type of the climate, right? So, and uh, Tiruvannathapuram. Even in that uh, cold season also it recorded 31 degrees Celsius. See right. And average temperature remains at 21 degrees Celsius throughout the year. Throughout the year the same temperature average. So we have explained the pressure con conditions. When the uh, sun will be direct on Tropic of Capricorn. Tropic of Capricorn will be situated in the water bodies only. So we explained uh, it will be low. Water body will be low pressure and the land body will be high pressure. So rainfall during winter as I told you that northeast monsoon winds uh, take moisture from the Bay of Bengal and give rainfall only to this area right and uh, because this type this is known as a dry offshore winds only it is dry northeast monsoon winds are dry because they are passing through land but some part some uh, winds will uh, only the onshore winds because some winds will only carry the rain that is of moisture see uh, winds blows from high pressure area to the low pressure area we have discussed and uh, 
they pick up the moisture from the bay of bengal and give a rainfall to the coromandel coast we have discussed i have marked this green color right this is only the coromandel coast and uh, the mainly it gave rainfall to the tamil nadu and some part of andhra pradesh and it is accompanied with the stormy winds and the highest rainfall which it gives in the tamil nadu it is in tamil nadu only nagapatnam nearly 100 cm of the rainfall winter rainfall in the north west india north west india during winter north west india including punjab haryana and get little rainfall because it is on shore winds and it get rainfall mainly due to the western disturbance what is western disturbance western disturbances are those winds which will originate in the mediterranean sea and give rainfall to this part of the india during the winter uh, during the winter conditions it is helpful for growing which crops wheat crops that's the important point and winter rainfall for tamil nadu is helpful for growing uh, growing rabi crops wheat like that okay and it is great economic importance also you know the characteristics of the winter season there is a cold weather humidity large humidity and low temperature so distribution of rainfall is very important in your syllabus because this will be carried on to the 10th te standard also so areas with over 200 cm of the rainfall north of tropic of cancer that is of north india areas includes uh, northern slope of eastern himalayas garo kashi jayanta hills states include meghalaya assam west bengal Benga, uh, bangladesh and arunachal pradesh we know that mausim ram near chirapunji receives highest rainfall in the world that is of this much so areas south of tropic of cancer which receives uh, more than 200 cm of rainfall include western ghats windward side of western ghats konkan and malaba coast you can just remember around two areas and two states enough so coastal plains of karnataka kerala karnataka goa Ma maharashtra areas with over 100 to 200 cm of the rainfall in northern india mid ganga valley states include bihar west bengal in south india northern part of andhra pradesh and southern parts of tamil nadu which receives over 100 to 200 centimeter of rainfall and state include madhya pradesh and odisha over 50 centimeter 50 to 100 centimeter of rainfall in the northern india include appa ganga valley eastern rajasthan and states include parts of punjab haryana kashmir with very short and little rainfall in south which receives 50 to 100 centimeter of rainfall southern deccan comprising of plateau regions of karnataka and uh, states include andhra pradesh tamil nadu and karnataka and in northern india which receives less than 50 centimeter of the rainfall is western rajasthan southern punjab and northern parts of kashmir in south india regions of deccan in the rain shadow and rain shadow of western ghats so forest resource of india in the india the climate uh, the climate flora fauna is the richest in the world there are over 10000 species and 6% of the total plant species in the world and it is having it is one of the renewable source of energy which is which reduces pollution wind and humidity purify airs and winds and uh, according to the national policy which laid down the target of raising the area covered by the forest in india to be 33 percent so national agency as a target to make india 33 percent of forest that is a one third of the total area now coming to the natural vegetation of india which is very important you could just read this box right the first is tropical evergreen forest the climate is uh, the climate it's very rainfall rainfall is over 200 to 300 centimeter of rainfall it has high humidity temperature is this much so distribution you can remember at least three to four distribution uh, windward side of western guards garo kashi jayanta hills lower slope of eastern guards and states include western west bengal kerala tamil nadu karnataka madhya pradesh maharashtra right forest and trees dense thick underground tall trees in the layer arrangement climbers creepers ferns bamboos epiphytes luxurious gro growth of these plants are been found so trees trees over and 60 cm of rainfall is found there and they com uh, comprises of hard wood fine grained uh, and roded leaf leaf okay species rosewood gurjan 
gurjan what's the function of gurjan used for making railway steepers and furnitures and there is also ebony and shinsham which is of which is of making high quality furnitures so special features are very important okay dense forest mixed stand thick or pony dense underground growth are also called as rainforest it's also called as rainforest because it has dense it is very dense it is mixed with uh, sand thick or pony okay so it's also called as evergreen forest evergreen forest because the trees will not shed their leaf at once they will shed their leaf at different times so it is called as evergreen it will be green every time these are the two names which is given to the same forest which is of tropical evergreen forest everything should be learned detailedly then next is tropical deciduous forest that is also called as monsoon type of forest the rainfall is this much temperature is 20 degrees celsius and the climate distribution include extend from sri valikas in the north to the eastern edge of western uh, western ghats north is deccan plateau lower slope of the himalaya state include odisha madhya pradesh bihar karnataka For, okay you can uh, now we will discuss about forest and trees what are the forest found forest type dense undergrowth shed leaf they will shed the leaf but whereas tropical will not shed the leaf at once in summer conditions during month of march to may and the species include sal which is used for making railway steepers teak which is used for which is resistance and uh, which is which does not rust uh, which does not rust in teak okay used for making furniture and ship building and sandalwood sandalwood which is used for making oils and in karnataka it is used as soaps and myrobalin is also used is also there so what is the special features which is important okay deciduous forest commercially are most useful these are most useful forest why because they are having most useful things like this okay trees shed the leaf from 6 to 8 weeks and deciduous forest found to be in the pure sands hence they are ideal for limbering and easy for transport this is of this third feature is of very important why it is used for why it is helpful and easy for transport because they are made up of pure stands now we will come for the forest thorny forest thorny forest the uh, the term itself suggest thorny means desert rainfall is over 25 to 100 cm temperature is 20 plus and the distribution include dry part of the northern western india rain shadow regions of western ghats state rajasthan punjab western western uttar pradesh and gujarat and what are the trees trees are widely scattered within the forest they are stunted with the long roots grossy leaves and spines why long roots to absorb water why spines to store the water and they are scattered because there are not much trees found what are the species kanjur fruit is edible kagra yields dye kagra and babul yield gum for tanning the leather so